In this video, we're going to be looking at velocity time graphs. So here we've got a velocity time graph with velocity on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. So what can we say about this graph? Well, in the first four seconds, the velocity is increasing. So we know that there's acceleration here. Then the velocity stays the same. So there's zero acceleration. And then the velocity starts decreasing, meaning there's deceleration here. Now there's two main properties of the velocity time graph we're going to be looking at. The first property is the area is the distance. The area underneath the graph is the distance of the journey. So let's go ahead and work out the distance of this journey. So you can see that the area underneath the graph makes up a trapezium. And you should know the formula for the area of a trapezium. Here's our formula for the area of a trapezium, and it's one you should memorize. Of course, you can always split it up into triangles and rectangles, but memorizing the formula is very important. So what is A and B in this formula? It's the parallel sides. It's these two sides here, the sides which are parallel to each other. And H is that perpendicular distance between the parallel sides. So now we can just go ahead and simply fill in that formula. We've got the 12 plus 4, and of course that's over 2. And now we need to times it by the distance between these parallel sides, which is 4. And you can put that into your calculator and get the answer. Of course the numbers are easy, so you don't need to use a calculator. And we get 32, and it's in meters. You can look at the velocity to work out what units your distance is going to be in. The velocity is in meters per second, so distance will be in meters and time will be in seconds. Now here's the next property. The gradient of the velocity time graph is acceleration. So looking at this journey, you can see different part of the journey has different accelerations. The steepness is changing. Let's work out the acceleration in the first part of the journey, in the first one second, between t equals 0 and t equals 1. If you haven't yet watched the video on gradient of a line, you must go ahead and do that first. Now, we can see that there's a straight line between t equals 0 and t equals 1 in the first second. Now, on this line, you can choose any two coordinates on this line to work out the gradient. Preferably, choose some nice integer coordinates, like I've done here. Next, we're going to work out the gradient. Now, you should know that gradient is change in y over change in x. So when we say change in y, we subtract the y values of the two coordinates over change in x, where we subtract the x values. Now, it's very important you go the same way around. For the y's, we did the y value of the coordinate on top, subtract the y value of the coordinate on the bottom. Now we must go the same way around for the x values. We must do the x coordinate of the coordinate on the top, subtract the x coordinate of the coordinate on the bottom, the same way around. So as long as you don't switch, it doesn't matter which one you subtract first. And we get 30 meters per second squared. So this is our acceleration in the first part of the journey. Now we want to work out the acceleration between t equals two and t equals four this second part of the journey. Of course, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to find some nice coordinates on that part of the line. So we've got some nice integer coordinates. We can go ahead and do change in y over change in x. So we've got 35 minus 30, which is us subtracting the y's. And then we've got four minus one, which is us subtracting the x's. And that gives us five over three. If you like, you can write that as 1.67 meters per second squared and that's the acceleration in that part of the journey so remember the gradient is the acceleration okay so here we've got another velocity time graph however the graph is curved so what can we say about the acceleration with curved graph there's no set gradient every part's got different steepness so every part of the graph has got a different acceleration and we want the acceleration when t equals 3. So how do we do that on a curved graph? 
Well, we go to a t equals 3 and we draw a tangent at that point. So here we've got tangent at t equals 3. And hopefully you've already guessed it. We work out the gradient of this tangent. And the gradient of this tangent will be the gradient at t equals 3. Hence, the acceleration when t equals 3. So of course we need to choose two nice coordinates on this line. So here I've chosen two nice integer coordinates. Now we're simply going to do change in y over change in x to work out that gradient. So we've got 6 minus 2 over 6 minus 1. And that gives us 4 over 5. And that's 0 0.8 meters per second squared. That's our acceleration. If you're unsure about how we're working at the gradient, this change in y over change in x, just simply go back and watch the video on gradient of a line. And there we have it. I hope you found that video useful. Support us by liking, subscribing, and share this with your friends. And if you still got some more questions on anything, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where you'll find your questions answered.